Finally, I get to take my DeLorean's new suspension and new muffler for a test drive. Unfortunately, it was a short drive. There was this burning smell that didn't seem good and the brake pedal was pretty soft by the time I got back. Then I saw this. There was no fire, but it was hot. I almost burned myself getting the lug nuts off. I could feel the heat coming off the rotor from two feet away. The paint on the caliper had bubbled and the strain relief on the brake line had melted. The heat had loosened the brake line, which is where the trail of fluid was coming from. I could have taken the bolts off with my fingers if it wasn't so hot. The smoke was from the fluid burning off the rotor. Once things cooled down a bit, I took off the caliper. The dust boots on the pistons didn't fare too well. One was completely burned away. The heat even melted off the glue for the wheel weights. I found them on the floor. The good news is that it seems like no real damage was done, but I still had to figure out what went wrong. My car has the big brake kit from Martin Gutkowski. This is a significant upgrade from the original brakes, with new lines, beefier calipers, larger pads, and vented discs. It also fixed a weird problem I was having where the first press of the pedal was soft and the next one was firm. Every time. It didn't feel very safe like that. No amount of bleeding the brakes fixed it, but with the big brake kit, the brakes are always firm. The calipers and rotors are made by high spec in the UK. They are basically impossible to get a hold of through email, and I didn't feel like calling the UK for support, but I didn't need to. Martin's assistance was more than enough. I sent him over a dozen emails and he was quick to get back to me every time. I would not have gotten this up as fast as I did without his help. It was clear that I'd have to take the caliper apart. I have never done that before, but the nice thing about working on something that's already broken is that it's already broken. I also had a big trip coming up in a little over a week, so I had to get this figured out fast. Let's go over how brake calipers work. Here's a four piston design similar to my brakes. The brake fluid goes in this end, across here, and then down the other side. The pistons have o-rings around them to keep the fluid from leaking out. Pressing the brake pedal increases the pressure in the system, up to hundreds of psi. This pushes the pistons out, which squeezes the brake pads against the rotor and slows the car through friction. When the pressure is released, the fluid drains back out of the caliper at a much lower pressure. The pistons retract simply because they aren't being forced against the rotor anymore. That's it. There's not a lot to them. The high-spec calipers are pretty easy to take apart. The body is made from four pieces machined from billet aluminum and is held together with six Allen head screws. There are round seals between these pieces to keep the fluid in. I thought these were special rubber discs until Martin pointed out that they're just O-rings that have been squeezed into this shape by the body. These wouldn't seal when reassembled, so I ordered some new rings from McMaster Car. Martin had me make sure to get EPDM rings, since brake fluid will eat most other kinds of rubber. I checked the pistons by removing them with compressed air, pushing them out the same way that brake fluid does. I clamped three pistons down and pushed air through the inlet, and the remaining piston popped right out. Removing the pistons let me check their O-rings for damage and inspect the pistons themselves. Everything was good. The pistons were tight in their chambers, I couldn't find any leaks anywhere, and the O-rings seemed solid and like they were doing their job. My assumption was that there was a blockage that was keeping the fluid from getting out, which in turn was causing the caliper to seize. Probably a bit of debris from the brake system that clogged one of the passages inside the caliper body. But everything seemed fine. So I put it back in the car. When I tried to bleed the system, no brake fluid came out at all. It was like the fluid wasn't even getting into the caliper. I removed both bleeder screws and still nothing. I even unscrewed the brake line just to prove there really was brake fluid in the system. So I do have a blockage, but I tested each piston with compressed air and they all worked. Air is making it through, but not brake fluid. The one part I didn't check yet was the emergency brake, because I basically never used it in my automatic. The stock DeLorean caliper has a completely separate mechanical e-brake. Pulling the lever clamps these arms onto the rotor and that slows your car down. The high-spec brakes use a hydraulic e-brake. This works by moving a plunger that blocks off the inlet for the brake fluid while also compressing the fluid that's already in the caliper. The same brake pads that you use for normal braking are used for the e-brake. The end result is the same. Pulling the lever engages the brake, just in a different way. The e-brake body is on the back of the caliper. It has six small Allen screws, one of which I immediately stripped and had to remove an extractor. Much to my surprise, this actually worked. I don't think I've ever had one of these work before. The bolts are a standard size, but not so standard that I could just run down to the hardware store and pick them up, so I had to put in another order with McMaster Car. Under the cover is the plunger, but it comes out from the other side. There, it's hidden under a cap behind the piston closest to the inlet. 
That cap is held down with two security screws for some reason, which is annoying, but it didn't pose a problem for my security bit set. Behind that, there are a couple of return springs that I managed not to lose, and the plunger. The plunger has two O-rings on it, and the closest one to the piston was damaged. I thought this was odd, but I didn't think it was causing my seizing until I tried to clean the inlet passage. The piston inlet is incredibly small. It also sits directly in front of the e-brake plunger. That tiny dot you can barely see here is the tip of a small brush I was using to clean the passages. This is how all of the brake fluid gets in and out of the caliper, through this tiny hole. And that was the problem. The ruined seal was blocking that port. When the brake pedal went down, the highly pressurized fluid pushed the seal out of the way, but it blocked it from flowing back out again. This effectively seized the entire caliper. My compressed air test was strong enough to blow by it, but not the returning low pressure brake fluid. So why didn't I see any fluid when I bled the brakes? The traditional way to do this is to have someone push the brake pedal while someone else turns the bleeder screw. This means you're using the full pressure of the brake system to bleed. I use a power bleeder, which can be operated by one person. It pushes brake fluid into the system at far lower pressures than the brake pedal does. It barely moves the pistons. It's more than enough to get the air out, but not enough to push past that ruined O-ring. The problem now was fixing it. I thought I'd need some kind of special square cross-section O-ring for this, but Martin told me these are also just round ones, and they just conform to the piston shape like the other O-rings did. Not that this helped any, I couldn't actually find any EPDM O-rings of the right size either locally or from McMaster Car. My solution was to swap the two O-rings that were already on the plunger. This isn't a great idea, but it fixes the immediate problem. Since I have an automatic, I basically never use the e-brake anyway, so I'm really not worried about this. But I should replace the o-ring at some point. I reassembled everything and put it back in the car. I didn't have new dust cover, so I just left them off. Martin noted that the race version of the calipers don't even come with dust covers, so they're not strictly necessary, although I imagine they prolong the life of the brakes a bit. I wasn't wild about reusing these brake pads either, but I can't see how heat would hurt them. I mean, they are specifically designed to stand up to the heat of braking, and I had just replaced them before this test, so they're basically brand new. Also, they're out of stock, so I didn't have much of a choice. Before I could actually fill the brake system, I need to do something about this brake line. I think the damage is only cosmetic, but it's not worth the risk to find out that I'm wrong. The local auto parts store was able to find one that's close enough. It's meant for some other car and it has an extra flange on it, but it's the right length and has the right connections, so it'll do. I zip tied it to the trailing arm to keep the flange from rattling around. I'll have to see if I can find something less complicated someday, but for now, this works. Now I just have to bleed the system and I can finally go for that test drive. The new suspension feels great. I have the KW set to about 50% stiffness, which feels about right. There are no vibrations anymore, thanks to the much beefier front suspension components I'm using now, and the resurface rotors, and the trailing arms aren't about to snap off. The new muffler is indeed quiet, or as quiet as can be expected at least. I got the tires aligned too. They were way off. The shop had no problems with the fronts, but they had to remove all the shims from the rears in order to get something resembling a proper toe in. I likely need some adjustable upper link arms, but after how hard it was to remove those lower pivot bolts, I think I'll hold off on that for a bit. I finished all of this, the suspension, the muffler, the brake problem, all of it just four days before my big trip to the DeLorean convention and show. It's in Crystal Lake, Illinois, which means I'll be driving this car 2,400 miles round trip to get there and back. That's 16 hours of driving each way. This will be a trial by fire for all these new parts. I'm going with three other members of Northeast Region DeLoreans, so we'll have four times as many chances for something to go wrong. I'll let you know how that goes in the next video, so press all the buttons so that the black magic that is the algorithm can let you know when that's ready. And thanks for watching.